video two, and we're going to just fairly quickly go over um, just the states of matter, and we're going to go more in depth in them um, after this, but this is just a nice graphic of it. So the first state of matter is obviously a solid, um, and you can see that here the particles are really um, closely uh, put together, and you can see that there's really essentially no space between them. And there you can kind of see there's an order to it, and most solids do have an order um, or uh, like a, an arrangement to them. Um, here we have our phase changes, and again, we'll talk more about these, but obviously if you're going from a solid and you're going towards the liquid phase, then we are melting. Think of if you have ice and you're going to water. Um, if you're going backwards, if you're going from the liquid to the solid state, then that's obviously uh, called freezing. So just like putting water in your freezer. Oh, down here is the liquid, and you can see um, that the, there's a there's a not as much of a there's no formal ar arrangement typically in liquids. Um, the, all the mar molecules are still or atoms are still touching, but they're not um, there's not that like strict arrangement um, in the first one. The, this phase change here, going from a liquid to a gas, um, is called vaporization. And the two common types, you do not need to write all of this down, but the two common types um, here are evaporation, and um, that's the one that naturally occurs, and this is how puddles dry. Um, but basically what happens here is certain molecules in the sample have higher than average energy, and they have lower than, and some have lower than average energy. And what happens with evaporation is the molecules with the higher um, amount of energy actually gain enough energy that they actually escape. So they leave the liquid phase and become a gas. So the more energy you have, the more freedom you have, so they actually leave and become a gas. Um, the other common example here is boiling. And boiling is just um, where you're basically, you are providing the energy. So it's not a natural process. Um, you know, on your stove, you're constantly providing that energy, which allows the molecules to overcome the intermolecular forces that holds them together, and then they change their phase. Um, going the reverse way from a gas to a liquid is condensation. So just think of like in the morning the dew or if you have a glass, a cold glass sitting out on a hot day, the water from the air atmosphere will actually condense onto that. And that's because it's actually lowering its energy. Um, so it's actually going reverting back to the liquid. Over here you can see just a general picture of gas, and you can see the molecules are really far apart. Um, there's no pattern here, they're not touching, um, and they're, they're very sparse. And then our last one here um, is, I don't know why there's two boxes, but anyways, um, we have the two things here. Um, if you're going from a solid to a gas, that's not a very common one, but it can occur. Um, this is going to take lots of energy either direction here because you're breaking all um, attractions between the molecules. Solids have lots of attraction. Gases have little to none. So this is a major phase change. Um, and going from a solid to a gas is going to be called sublimation. Um, and we'll see this later in the year when I bring in dry ice and stuff. But it's it's really a cool thing because you're not used to seeing it where it, there literally is no liquid and it, it's just an unusual thing for us to see. Going the opposite direction, going right um, from a gas to a solid is deposition and if you like snow you want deposition. Um, you, if you don't have deposition then you get freezing rain and you get all the ice and stuff. So um, if you want pure snow this is what has to occur right from the gas um, to the solid so it can actually form the, the pretty crystals that happens. And we just have a short little video clip. Science tells us that humans can't walk on water. Okay, Jesus did it, but he was the son of God, which gave him an unfair advantage. As for the rest of us, well, we have to obey the laws of physics. Even John Tickle. on water because, like all humans, he's too big and heavy to be supported by surface tension and not buoyant enough to float. But I can walk on custard. But he can walk on custard. First, let's empty the pool. This swimming pool takes 27,000 litres of liquid. That'll mean we'll need a lot of custard. So we need some heavy machinery on our side. Oh, this is going to be fun. Cement mixers and industrial bags of custard powder are the order of the day. <laughs> so, John, how are you going to walk on custard? Well, I'm going to take advantage of the properties of custard. 
with itself, right? It's what's called a non-Newtonian liquid. Oh, sometimes it has properties like a liquid, sometimes it has properties like a solid. When I walk across the custard, I'm going to be doing it very quickly and impacting the custard quite hard. And under those circumstances, when you apply pressure, it behaves like a solid, so I shouldn't sink. So does this work with any custard? As long as you've got corn flour or some other starchy material in it, it should work, yeah. If you stop then, you're not stressing it anymore. Oh, I'm going to sink very right. slowly like a stone into custard. Yes. You can't swim in custard. Not really, I don't right. think so. Good luck. Thanks very much. So John's confident. He trusts his science. The type of custard is important here. It needs to be corn flour based and hence starchy enough to have the qualities John expects. The custard our brainiacs are making is more industrial than edible. You wouldn't want this served up on your rhubarb crumble. And we need a lot of it. A lot more than we actually ordered. How much do we need? But I, I've no idea. Because I mean, since we were told we needed a certain amount, we've not even got that. Well, let's just get as much as we can. They've had delivery today. Hello. We've probably need as much as we've got in stock. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 That's a good video. Um, that does show um, a non-Newtonian liquid, and all a non-Newtonian liquid is is one that doesn't follow the normal rules. So we talk about like, oh, these are the ones that um, actually um, follow the rules, and then this is one that doesn't. And it's actually, it's if you've ever made oobleck, that's really all they made. It's just cornstarch and water. If you've never made oobleck, it's pretty cool. Got to make it. It's cornstarch and water. Um, so this is video two. <laughs> 